CYC is a free channel that presents the Word of God for everyone. Your support will help us to continue the mission. Visit our website, cycnow.com. Even a dollar will make a difference. leadership uh, retreat where we're going to start our very first workshop. Um, the objective of this workshop is to be able to teach these youth how to be a leader and how to work with others um, to accomplish a goal. Um, and the goal that they're going to be accomplishing is to build a building. Um, we have 18 teams with five people per each team um, and they're each going to be given a bag where they're going to have supplies in there that they have never seen before and um, their goal is to be able to use all these supplies to um, build a, a tower and we will be judging them based on the height of the tower um, and if it can stand alone and also on creativity. So we at asked each group to designate a leader and that leader was um, supposed to exhibit leadership qualities such as being able to delegate the tasks amongst um, the group, also be able to plan um, how they want the building um, and also to see, uh, to see the supplies that they have and be able to use the supplies creatively to be able to build a very tall and um, a strong tower. So let's see how the youth are going to use the supplies they're given to creatively build a durable and tall tower. As we saw inside in the workshop, we had 18 groups with five people in each group. And each group was supposed to pick a leader. And that leader was supposed to be able to um, give out tasks to the team members so that they can achieve a goal of building a creative, durable, and tall building. Um, as we walked around and saw the different groups they, were, groups, they were all working really hard and we saw that every leader did a great job in delegating the tasks and making sure that everybody was working on a certain task in order to build the building and also we saw that all the groups um, were cooperating together very well. Um, not every group built um, uh, had the tallest tower, of course we do have a winner, but every group was successful in really um, learning uh, what we were trying to teach them in this um, workshop which is how to be a good leader. If you look at the numbers, um, we have group seven. One for um, how tall the building was. Their building was 91 inches. Um, and group eight, um, one for creativity, um, which in the beginning we, were, we uh, weren't planning on assessing for creativity, but we did and it was, they got 90.5 inches on the height. Um, and we also gave them a reward for creativity because they did a good job with the supplies that they were handed to even though they never saw it ahead of time. Hope you benefited um, with us uh, as much as our youth benefited from this workshop, and we hope to see you in the future as we perform many more leadership workshops. Um, this is Marina Wasif with CYC. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. All right, so are you guys having a good time so far? It's been about three hours. Okay, good, good. So, today we have uh, a super important topic. Actually, it's super important for um, the rest of the retreat and for the rest of your lives. You're going to be hearing about it many, many times. I want you to know that um, over the last few months, I've, I've had conversations with lots of, you know, very, I guess, uh, you know, senior people at work and just about every time I sit with them, they talk about this topic, right? Or they mention it at least, you know, two or three times in a conversation. So I want to ask you guys a question. I'm going to ask you guys a question. And when I ask you the question, I'm going to ask you for an answer because that's how it usually works. And when you guys try to answer, and I think you're going to do a great job at it, we want to wait for the mic to come to you, right? The reason is because you want everyone else to hear and because we want uh, to be heard on the cameras because you're all being recorded and it's because we're trying to keep this from being awkward. One example of a, of a negative change is Adolf Hitler's leadership, right? 
his leadership was, was catastrophic, right? It was, it was inhumane. But, he, but as a leader, he led so many people to carry out his objectives. Is that clear? So even though the, the changes were horrible, but the leadership was effective, right? So being a leader, again, I just want to emphasize that very first point, that a leader is someone who creates change. Jesus Christ is perfect, right? Now we have over a billion Christians in this world, right? So, so he was very effective and he was perfect. He's, he's the, the epitome of, of, of rightness, right? He's completely righteous. And Mahatma Gandhi, who, led, who freed his people, right, from, from the, the rule of the, the British, right? Okay, number two is it does not depend on how great or impactful the change is. So we, you can be a leader of a church, you can be a leader of a government, you can be a leader of a home, or you can be a leader of yourself. Hey guys, guys, yeah, these guys have never seen paper before, they like to play with it. So that's really good, that's called paper, yeah, and they make it out of trees in here. So, the, um, so a leader, it doesn't matter how impactful the change is. So you might, you might say, oh, but I made a change, but all I did, Makar, let's be serious. All I did was I went to the bathroom and I just cleaned up the floors and I took the garbage out and I put it there, right? Or maybe, the so that's a task. So you did a, a task that was, it didn't change the world here, you didn't cure cancer, but you did a very, a very a thing that mattered, something that was very important. Someone had to do it. Or you said, hey guys, I noticed that Whenever we go on retreats and we all come enter on the bus, we, we should put, get these people on the bus first and then these other people, right? It's a very small detail, but it made a big difference, right? So these, or, or even if it, you might say, Makar, that wasn't like the most like, unique idea ever, but it's still, you made a change. Number three is being a leader does not depend on the personality of the leader. There are people who tell me all the time, all the time, and it makes me so sad. They say, Makar, I'm not a leader. I can't be a leader, you know? Look at that guy over there, he's a leader. Or look at that girl over there, look at the way she talks, right? She's definitely a leader, right? But me, I'm not a leader. I can't be a leader. I'm not a leader, that's what people say. How sad is that, right? How sad is it that some people might have so much potential, they might be such so impactful in the world, but they, they don't feel like they could be leaders. You know, guys, I'll tell you something really interesting. I was talking to my son in class about this last year, and we were talking about integrity and leadership, and I was telling them about an article that was written about a CEO, a CEO of, of a big bank, right? And one of the interesting things that it said about the CEO was that the CEO, everybody was really looking forward to this guy coming on and being the CEO because he was very dull. Right? They said the word he was very dull. Like he was just like a, not, not really like exciting, didn't really do like all these extravagant things. But they said that right now what the industry needs is someone who's cool and calm and who just gets the job done and leads the people. Right? That's it. They don't need someone who's giving like amazing speeches. They don't need someone who, you know, likes to, you know, color or whatever, you know, other leaders do. Right? And sometimes introverts, there, I know, you, Actually, so this is public information because he said it about himself. You guys, there, there's a priest who said this about himself, and lots of people love to, to listen to this priest, and he said about himself that in the end, he's an introvert. When he gets back home, he doesn't really like to, he's not really like a very social person. He likes to just go home and, you know, just read or something. And he gets very, like, anxious when all these people just come around. And I, I was just listening to another, um, another thing about leadership, and they were saying that some speakers, like, like people who come up and speak, they're a lot more comfortable speaking to hundreds of people than they are actually dealing with those hundreds of people right after the speech is done. So, because, so there are many different personalities out there, and all of these personalities can be per the personalities of a great leader. Is that clear, guys? Does that point make sense to you? The last one is that it does not depend on your position in a group, right? So you can be a child and lead, you can be a, a priest and lead, you can be new at something, you can be a husband or a wife and lead. So it doesn't depend on that. So back to what Anthony said, which is the last point, is that a leader is anyone who creates change. So what is a leader? It's anyone who what? Creates change, excellent, thank you. Next, 
What are the different types of leaders, right? What are the different types? What I want to show you guys is that there are, there are many ways to go about being the leader. There are many ways to go about being a leader. And I'm going to tell you about some of them. The first thing I do want to tell you, though, is that the servant leader model is the best model. What is the servant leader model? Jesus said, you call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash another's feet, one another's feet. That's in John 13, verses 13 to 14. So he said, look at me, guys. I'm your leader, right? You call me a teacher, and you're right in saying that I'm your teacher, and I'm your Lord, I'm your master, right? But look what I do being your master and teacher and leader. Look at what I do. I am here girded, and I'm washing your feet and wiping them, right? Pouring water, washing and wiping, and then drying their feet. That's what a leader is doing. So, guys, I just want to say something back to one of the comments that was mentioned, is that a leader does not just give orders. A leader does need to give orders. That's right. But they don't just give orders. They, will, they are also willing at any point in time to go and fulfill those orders themselves. Is that clear? Do you guys get that point? Let me tell you something. As a servant, as a servant, one of the things that you know, you go through like for the first, I don't know, 50 years of your service is what type of servant am I? What is my calling? What are the things that God wants me to do? Like I'm here, you know, they call me a servant. I do this Sunday school thing, right? And I give talks and I read about God and stuff, right? And people tell me, uh, you know, you're a servant. I say, okay, so what does God want me to do? So one of the, the early things that I thought about was that, you know, after I got, have been doing this for like maybe three months or something, I can now tell people what to do, right? Or I can I'm have experience and I can tell other servants what to do, right? So that was a very bad idea. And, but, but I started to say, oh, okay, well, I, I've been doing this for a while. You come and do this. Hey, you do that. Hey, you do this. Hey, you do that, right? And then... I, when things weren't getting done, I started to say, what is wrong with me? Like, what's happening? Why am I failing? And other servants can do this and I can't, right? So I found that I was so willing to say things to other people and ask them to do them, but I was never willing to do them myself. I was never willing to do those, those things that I thought were beneath me, right? Do you guys get what I'm saying? That a servant and a leader is someone who is willing to do that work that they are asking other people to do. They are willing to lead by what? Who said it? Somebody said it here. Mira, by example, right? They're willing to lead by example. They are serving, right? Okay. And look, guys, look, because Jesus washed the disciples' feet. After Jesus, in the flesh, left earth and he ascended to the heavens, look at how much the disciples did because Jesus washed their feet. They wash one another's feet as well, right? And we still wash each other's feet, right? The priest washes our feet. On, on a few times a year, right? You guys, you guys with me? Okay, good. Now, so we're going to talk about types of leaders, and I want us to look at them in two ways. Are you guys bored or are you with me? Yes, no? Maybe? Maybe? I, that's complicated. So does anybody, are you guys with me or no? Okay, do you want me to change something? you want me to start telling jokes or something? Or Yeah, okay, I have no jokes. They're all corny. So, um, what, what, what are the two things we're going to look at when it comes to a leader? We're going to look at two things. Number one is task. So a task is getting things done. So a leader needs to get things done. I'm not saying he has to do every, or she has to do every single one of them, but a leader has to get things done. The second thing is, is that a leader has to have concern for the people that they're leading. You guys are, are spot on when you said this, that they have to know what's going on with the people and they have to care about them, okay? So, but my question is, why is the relationship part important? I wanna ask you a question. If I'm a leader and I get everything done, why does it matter for me to have concern for the people? Why, as a leader, do I need the people? If you don't have a relationship with people, simply, they're not going to follow you, right? They might follow you a little bit, but then they won't follow you in the end, right? I'll tell you something that in life, there are, the way life is, is that you, things can be structured in such a way that we, you can make people do things, right? Like if at work, I'll give you an example, right? At work, 
people get paid, right? People get paid at work, right? So if you say, you can, you as a manager, right? As a manager or a leader, you can say, if you don't do what I say, I'm gonna fire you, right? You could be a horrible, horrible leader, but you can say, I'm gonna fire you if you don't do what I say. And, you're good, and that person has a family to feed, they, need, they have bills to pay, right? So you can say that to them and they will do what you say. So what I'm trying to tell you is that what you're saying is right, but it's not the whole answer. Because even if you're not, you don't have a good relationship with people in life, there are ways to still get what you want. But what I'm trying to tell you is to be an, a great leader, you need to have a concern for people. So you have one level, which is people just doing what you say. But the next level is you don't want people to just do what you say. You want them to add even more to what you're saying, right? You want you, the reason why you want to lead people and you want other people to be involved is that when you do things alone, you're not going to have as great ideas and great contributions as if you were to do it with so many other people. So that's why you need to have them create the scenario and the environment for them to do, to be themselves, to be wholehearted in what they do. Excellent answers, guys. So there are four types of leaders, four types of leaders. Number one, and the authoritarian leader, right? The authoritarian leader is someone who gets the job done, but has the low relationship. So we talked about this. The consequences are what? Low relationship means you could potentially not get what you want. And number two is that you won't, people won't give their what? Their all. Very good. Number two is the country club leader, right? The country club leader is the guy who is like smiling, who is, you know, everybody loves that person. But can he get something done? Or can she get something done? No. But everybody loves that person, you know? Like, look at them. They're so nice. Look at them. They got big biceps like me. Look at, why are you laughing? So, so that's, see my jokes are so corny. So th that's the question, right? What, what, what type of leader is the country club leader? The country club leader <laughs> is someone who everybody will, will like, but they won't get anything done. Is that an effective leader? No, because they don't get anything done. Number three is the impoverished leader. The impoverished leader is like the worst case scenario, in my opinion, right? So they don't get anything done. They're begging for people to help them. They're always whining and complaining, and no one listens to them. So you might find that there are people who are very smart, but they, don't, they can't lead well. You guys, have you guys ever had, I'll give you a similar example. Have you guys ever had a very smart teacher who was very bad at teaching? Yeah? Yeah. I've had that too, you know? I've had, I've had people who are absolutely, like, brilliant. You know, they have PhDs. They, they know their stuff more than anybody. But if you ask them to, to teach what they know, they can't do it, right? They're, you're, like, in class, you're like, what is happening? You know, why are you here? What, what's going on? So you have no idea. You can't even listen to one or two of their sentences because they're such bad teachers, right? The same thing, there are people who are in leadership positions who cannot lead, who are not effective leaders. This takes us to the last type of leader, the team leader, right? The team leader is high on task and high on relationship. So everybody likes to work with that person, but they also get the job done. The next thing I want to tell you is that, what is a follower? A follower is a leader who is an independent, critical cooperator. A follower is a leader who is an independent, critical cooperator, right? Let me tell you something. Mariam and Marianne, when they were passing around the microphone, right? They are following, right? They're following. But they're also leading because there is something that they're doing that you guys may not realize. Number one, they are thinking about who to kind of walk near first in terms of to give the mic, right? They look at me to see, hey, Makar, do you want this person to answer a question or no, right? They're actually thinking about that. So that's a contribution that they're making. Number two is that, number two is that they're, um, what is it? No. Oh, they're creating change. In the past, we don't have as many contributions as we have when there's someone to walk around and actually do this service, right? They're following the servant leader model. They're doing it, right? They're actually, they're not just saying, yeah, you know, like, like Emgad was saying, they just, they don't give orders and say, somebody should pass around the mic, we should have someone to answer questions, right? They're actually doing it, right? They're serving and doing this thing. 
And because they can do it, not just us are benefiting, but there's many people who can benefit from all your great contributions after today's lecture because they can hear your answers in the recording. If they weren't leading that way or following that way, we wouldn't have all that benefit. Are you guys clear on that? Right? So back to what Verena was saying, that uh, uh, every person is a follower and the leader. The next type of follower is the passive follower. Remember he said the sheep? How interesting is it that Benoit said something right? It doesn't happen very often. So a passive follower, right? A passive follower is somebody who is dependent on other people and what they're saying, right? They just, all they do is just do what people tell them to do. And they actually kind of don't do anything, right? So they're like, all they do is a little itty bitty thing that somebody told them to do and they don't think about anything. The next one is the conforming follower, the yes man, right? They're very active, but they only do what they're told. They never say, oh wait, but I have a better idea. Oh wait, what if we do this? Oh wait, I don't think we can do that because of such and such. So this is the conforming follower. All they do is what they're asked to do, but they definitely do it. That's another type of follower. The fourth kind of follower is the best kind of follower, the effective follower. They don't just think critically and independently, they are also very active. Um, let me tell you something, what's the difference between you guys when you guys start doing stuff and, and serving and working? What's gonna make the difference between you and, and someone who's in another country that gets paid a lot less, right? The difference between you and everyone else is that you guys are gonna go and you're not just gonna do what you're asked to do, right? When you encounter a problem, you're gonna try to solve it as well. You're gonna say, wait, somebody asked me to do something and I found a problem. I'm not just gonna be passive and say nothing. I'm gonna try to find a solution. And if I can't find a solution, I'm gonna at least try some things and give some recommendations. That's what a true leader does, a leader who's a good follower. The last thing is the pragmatic survivor who's a politician, right? So that's the example they use. Sorry for anyone here who wants to become a politician. At least you know what you need to do. So the, the, the pragmatic survivor is someone who does whatever works, right? If they need to be just kind of, you know, they come up and somebody says, yeah, raise lower taxes. Okay, sure. Somebody else says, hey, raise taxes. Yeah, sure, just vote for me, right? That's what, that's what the, the pragmatic survivor uh, does. They just follow whatever, in whatever way is the best. Are there any questions before we get to the next slide? The next two slides are probably the most um, difficult to understand, and I think I have 30 seconds to explain all of them to you. So we're not, we may not get all that done, but are you guys with me? Yes? We're gonna go really fast. All right, integrity and the science of leadership. Guys, I wanna tell you, what I'm about to show you in two slides is something I sat in for four days. I was able to go for free because I was a student in the school where I learned this, but the other companies were sending their leaders there, and do you know how much they were paying to bring them there for, for four days? Somebody say a number. How much did, were four days of sitting in what I'm gonna show you in two slides cost? Huh? Just four days. Four days, three nights, guys. 2,000? 10,000. 3,000 dollars they spent for someone to, sh to listen to what I'm gonna show you in two slides, and we're not gonna cover it completely, but we'll do our best and you can ask me later. Integrity is the science of leadership. It is where leadership begins, okay? It's where leadership begins. This is, everybody can be a leader in everything we said, and one of the things that everybody can do is what I'm gonna show you. Integrity means being whole and complete. The example I'd like to use is, you guys know what a bicycle wheel looks like? What are those things inside the bicycle wheel called? Spokes, right? Spokes and bearings. I don't know what a bearing is, but you're probably right. It's smarter than me. So the, the, it's, you have these spokes inside. What do the spokes do in a bicycle wheel? The, right, exactly. They keep the outside connected to the inside, and the inside, that thing in the inside of the wheel is what's connected to the rest of the bicycle, right? Okay, if one of the spokes gets like cut, or somebody pulls it out, or it's like loose, What's gonna to happen to the bicycle wheel? Nothing's gonna to happen to the bicycle wheel. So why do we even have that spoke there in the first place? Exactly, so something will happen, it will get weaker, it'll be incomplete, it won't be whole, right? And because it's not whole, it's functioning is going to be impaired. Do you guys know what impaired means? Good, I know, if I was in the younger group, they would be like, uh. So impaired means that it's not gonna work the way it was intended to work, okay? You guys with me? Yes? Okay. So integrity means that you're whole and complete. When you're in integrity, you have access to your full potential. So 
if you pull one of the spokes out, even though that wheel can move at like 50 miles an hour, once you pull that thing out, it can't work at 50 miles an hour because every time you get to the part where the spoke was, it'll like do a little bounce, right? So you can't, every time you do that bounce, you lose some of the efficiency so it doesn't, move, it doesn't go as fast. Are you guys with me? Yes. So what does that mean for human beings? What does it mean for human beings? If you want to be whole and complete as a human being, you have to honor your word. You have to honor your word. I'm going to tell you what honor means and what word means. Are you guys with me? I'm doing this so fast, right? Like, just, but just pay me $3,000 when I'm done. So on, what does honor mean and what does word mean? What, let's start with word. Word means three things. I'm simplifying this. The first thing it means is what you say you're going to do. What you say you're going to do. If I say I'm going to do something, if I say, Andrew, I'm going to finish in five minutes, my word, that's my word. I gave my word, right? Another thing that your word is, is what others expect from you. What others expect from you. If you guys expect to have uh, great food, right, and you don't get great food, you are going to be upset, right? So you might be upset, you'll be like, you know what, Makar, I'm like hungry and I'm not happy. I can't pay attention to the lectures, right? So you guys were expecting something and we didn't give it to you. So what, you, what is expected of me is my word. The third thing is what you know to do. Like you know not to kill people, right? Who, does anybody here not know that? All right, so there's something called not killing people. You shouldn't do it. It's really, you should know not to do it. So that's something that's a part of your word as well. You say, I'm going, to, you, by the speed limit being 55, and you, you're not saying, I'm not going to follow that. You didn't say that. So that means that's a part of your word. Does everybody get what your word is? Yes? With me, guys, we're getting lunches like in like one second. All right. We know what your word is. What does it mean to honor your word? Next slide. By the way, after this is just one more slide and then questions. How integrity works. Honoring your word is not equal to keeping your word. Somebody, just one person, tell me why that's important for me to say. Can you always keep your word? No. Why? Things can go wrong. Things happen, right? I could say, hey, I'm going to be there in five minutes, and then right in front of me, some, God forbid, some car crashes, right? So I can't keep my word, but I can definitely <coughs> honor my word. I can definitely honor my word. How does that work? First, everything starts by you giving your word, right? When you give your word, you have two options, like we said. You can either keep your word at the time you said you were going to do it, or you cannot keep your word. But if you still want to honor your word, if you can't keep your word, you have to say that you won't as soon as you know and clean up the mess. I'm going to give you a very simple example. I'll give you four scenarios and then we're done. Okay? Simple example, four scenarios, then we're done. The example is, if I'm supposed to give a talk at, you know, at some meeting, right? And I can't do it. So I said, yes, Uncle Haney, I can give the talk, right? And I'm going to do it in two weeks. And then two weeks comes, and I can't do it. Like for my, at work or something, they say, Makar, we have, we have a big thing we need you to do. So I'm going to say, hey, Uncle Haney, I'm going to say, Uncle Haney, I just found out like five minutes ago that I can't do this, right? And guess what, uncle? I found another speaker to come and to do this. So I cleaned up the mess, right? And I told him, right? Did you guys get what I'm saying with me? If you're, this, we're in integrity. We, are in, we have access to our full potential. Four scenarios. Number one, I'm going to do this very quickly. I'm going to read out loud. You agreed to help your friend move into their new apartment on Saturday, but your manager called you on Thursday and told you you have to come into work that day. What's, if you want to honor your word, what do you do? You send somebody, you can send somebody by cleaning up the mess. And before you send somebody, at least you got to do what? Call your friend and tell them, right? Because if you told your friend, I'm going to come and help you move, and then you don't call them, you took away from them the opportunity to find a replacement, right? They could have found a replacement, but you took that away from them. Number two, you agreed to pick your brother up at 8 a.m. and give him a ride to work, but you hit a lot of traffic on the way and will be at least 20 minutes late. What's the first thing you do? You got to say something. You got to say that you won't keep your word. And maybe your friend had, had their neighbor can take them. But you didn't let them ask that, ask their, their neighbor, because you didn't call them and tell them you were going to be late. Maybe they could have been to work on time, but they can't because you didn't call them. So if you want to honor your word, you got to tell them. Number three, you told your team that you would submit your part of the project on Friday night. But a senior servant asked you to give the lecture at the high school meeting the same night. What do you say? What do you do? 
To the who? Okay, that's, that's a very good, that's a, that's a good decision in terms of priorities, right? You can say, no, I already have a commitment, I can't do it, right? Or you can say, hey guys, I'm gonna give it to you on Saturday, and you give the talk. But you gotta, you gotta say something. Last one, you agreed with a co-servant to talk to one of the young adults about an issue that they're having, but after prayer and guidance, realize that you would not be the best person to deliver the message. What's the best thing to do? Call the servant. You guys get what I'm saying? You guys with me? So I know it sounds like Makar, duh, obviously, this makes so much sense. It's so, such common sense. But guys, how many, did, who, who said they were going to be here at 7 o'clock in the morning at church? That was a part of your word, right? Who here was at church by 7 o'clock? All right, you see? So maybe we could have planned two additional activities on the retreat. We could have done so many more things. We wouldn't have been in a rush. You see right now, I can't go through the talk as, as the way I want to because we're in a rush. You guys, I'm gonna have less time for lunch because we're in a rush. So you see how it makes us incomplete and we don't have access to our full potential? You guys with me? Yeah, all right, summary, very quick, we're done. Number one is we have a lot to discuss over the next few days. Number two, this is a very important topic. Number three, you'll, you'll hear a lot about this in your life and some of it may be very confusing like we had at the very beginning, we had lots of confusion. Number four is everyone here is a leader. Number five, everyone here is a follower, right? And the last one is integrity is where leadership begins. Any questions? Any questions? I'm guessing that means there are no questions. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Glory be to God forever. Good night.